Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the She Social Podcast with myself, Ms. Cosmo. Thank you so much for joining me every single Wednesday, just to have some really awesome conversations with some really awesome women in the in the entertainment industry. Today, definitely no different. I've got two really amazing ladies who I'm going to be chatting to, hailing all the way from Duane, the queen of the coast herself. I've got Nels, and I'm also going to be chatting to Holly Ray a little bit later on in the podcast as well. But let's get straight into the first conversation for today. Nels, what's up, baby girl? I'm good, I'm good. And you? I'm good. Nels, it's always so great to see your face. You're always feeling so bright and so sunshiny <laughs> and so like, you know, blessed. Yeah. How are you feeling? Hey, but Durban is so great today, hey? But really? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? It's, it's the very sunshine good. And it's good. Yeah, it's very wet. Oh. The sunshine, this is, the, this is all the sunshine you're going to get in Durban. Right. But yes, now, so obviously, um, people know you as the queen of the coast. They know you for your rap skills. They know you for um, the, the, the music that you've been put, uh, putting out and making, sh- making sure that you put uh, Durban on the map. But um, I think for today, I just wanted to kind of get into a little bit more of a chat as to who Nels is, how your, your journey has kind of progressed throughout the years as well. And um, obviously, if you, uh, seeing how lockdown has been treating you, how things have changed for you, um, how have you been surviving these past couple of months? Because I know it's been very difficult for artists to kind of push through with regards to um this this 2020 that we just didn't expect yeah yeah true um honestly uh, it hasn't been easy it hasn't been easy at all but um it's just a, it was just a matter of just trying to keep a positive attitude the music obviously still carries on as artists we always barely like you know caved in in studio so it was that's you know that's not new but the whole interaction with you know the fans um pushing as well like you know doing pr going to radio interviews and stuff like that and so um it, it was a bit of a challenge to push um the music but yo but uh, like a lot of good things happened you know during lockdown as well because it was playlisted like everywhere on thing uh, on the music channels so as much as i wasn't doing anything so that was happening so i mean it wasn't all that bad yeah it wasn't all that bad there's a there's a lot of silver linings that you know we we it also actually got in, got got me to to just pay more attention to to my sound as well. I feel like I had more time to just consume what I've been making instead of just always like making something and then once it's ready you drop. You know what I'm saying? I, so it, it just made me more I seem more in tune with what I'm actually mm-hmm. making, more in touch with my feelings as well. And yeah. <laughs> I think it's yeah. very well for a lot of artists um, in South Africa, like you're mentioning, from an introspecting perspective, listening to what you're doing, paying attention to what you're putting out, and also just re-energizing and seeing exactly which direction you want to take for your career, which is really awesome. I think everybody kind of needs to censor themselves in some certain way or another. Um, but uh, just to kind of backtrack a little bit and kind of get people to 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 um just get in tune as to who Nels is and where they would know you from uh, for those people who don't actually know who Nels is um i think a lot of south africans got to know you through the tv show the hustle um you were one of the the, the females who made it to the top 10 i think you even made it to the top 5 if i'm not mistaken how far along did you actually get on the show top 7 i'm at top 7 <laughs> <laughs> yeah top 7 you were top seven of the hustle, and I think yeah. the competition with all those guys because you were in the first season, and uh, that was a very, very tough, yeah, for- um, a very tough season to be in because that was setting the tone for what people were actually listening to, and it was also kind of getting people into involved in the TV show itself. How are you still feeling about yourself and that journey that you went through with the hustle? Um. So yeah, the hustle was I think it was two thousand and fourteen, thirteen, somewhere there. So um, when that happened, I won't even lie, um, I wasn't even expecting to actually be on The Hustle. I was just, you know, submitting that 15 second video with hopes to, to okay, fine, I'm going to make it there. And when I did, it was a, it was a different ball game. I, it was my first time actually in Joburg. So Jay, it was my first time actually even climbing a plane <laughs> when I was going to The Hustle. Really? So it was That's my mother. Yeah, it was. <laughs> 
it was it was fun at the but at, when I got to to the actual competition and we started shooting it was it w- it was a lot happening at once you know because we were we were actually shooting each episode every day right okay. Okay. so you literally yeah you literally fighting to actually stay the next day otherwise Naksasa, if if everything <laughs> if you if you mess up the next day you're gone. So it, 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 it just opened up my eyes to actually what's really happening. Because, you know, Durban is very quiet. Durban is very slow when it comes to, 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 to the actual industry. You know what I'm saying? Um, we have a lot of talent here, but things don't move as fast as they do in Joburg. So when I got there and we started shooting and I started learning all these things as well about the music industry, it just, that's, that's the most, that's, I feel like that's the highlight of the hustle for me. I learned so much about just handling my business. No. no um the, yeah that was the that was what i benefited like how i benefited the most besides the fact that obviously it's a world's big stage yes. you get to be seen by a lot of you know people um so the connections as well they helped but more than anything i learned how to actually you know con- like maneuver in the in the in the music industry and after that that's when i went independent after after the the hustle because it opened up my eyes with yay people are actually out here just like <laughs> people are saying they're doing these things but they're not doing the things you know they don't know so yeah that's that's what the hustle did for me and I mean even before that I was I was still hustling here in Durban I was signed before that um I'm I'm from the south coast of KZN hmm. so there was yeah there was some there was some record deal that I was on I was stuck on and <laughs> That didn't go very well. Um, so yeah, I've been hustling before the hustle, but the, the after the hustle, definitely things elevated, you know. Um, and yeah, now we're here. Yes, <laughs> a couple exactly. years later. And now know? we're here. And how was the reception going back home after making it to the top step and obviously being kicked off of a TV show like that, where all eyes yeah. are on to find out who's next, who's got next, how far is is now's going to take it? And obviously you were you were representing Durban when you when you were out there, getting getting back home yeah. after the show. How was that for you? To be honest with you, um, yeah, I'm going to be very honest. <laughs> I was I was I was not expecting the the. The, the reception when I got back home. I was expecting it, okay, fine. You know, I was out there representing Dubai as a female. So when I come back, you know, um, I'm going to have more support from the local promoters when it comes to like, you know, getting gigs and stuff like that. But that was not the case. Mm-hmm. That was not the case. When I came back, Jay, it was just like, okay, cool. Um, yes, I was in the hustle and everything. And the people, my team, some people were supportive, but the entire like industry here in Durban, it was just like, Jay, uh, you didn't win, so uh, and <laughs> I'm I guess, serious. That's how like I ain't even gonna front. <laughs> and I guess that's the fight. That's the fight that we as females will constantly have is that we're always trying to battle with the guys. And as much as uh, we hate being labeled as female DJ, female rapper, yeah. female entrepreneur, female this and that, and the case may be, but it's a it's a reality that we have to face every single day. That when we are working in certain industries, the males will always kind of get some sort of a recognition or a shine. But here you are, you made it to the top seven. You're the only one from Durban and you're coming back with this um, representation that you've kind of put out there for Durban. And they're still just like, oh, okay, whatever. But um, if that was a new, it would have been a different conversation. And how are you dealing sure. with those types of dynamics when you're out there still trying to push yourself as an independent now? You're no longer signed to a label. You're trying to push your own hustle in Durban. You're trying to make people take you seriously because at the end of the day, you're putting in your blood, sweat, and tears into this thing that you love so much. Um, how are you dealing with those dynamics there in Durban? Um, I feel like my focus right now is just, it's not just in Durban, you know? Um, I feel like I've moved my focus away from from just, trying to you know please everyone in Durban or trying to make everything happen here in Durban so Jay I I don't even I'm putting out music (laughs) the internet is out here people are playing my music in other countries you know what I'm saying so um as, as as far as being taken seriously I feel like they will only take you seriously once they see like you know what you do for example your laeta it's always playlisted Yes. Then you start getting people like, hey, no, we actually, we've been seeing you. Like, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, now people want to, <laughs> now people want to holler. So I feel like you must just stick to your lane and whoever jumps on, mm. jumps on. And whoever does not, honestly, it is what it is. 
that yeah. that's that's how I'm maneuver. And this whole female thing, female rapper, female banbani, you female. I feel like that's they have to say the female because they they can't believe with yo you're actually a female rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's our superpower. The whole female thing. I actually I'm starting to like it when they say female banbani. Yes, I am a female. Well, the <laughs> fact that you have to highlight that. Yes. The fact that you have to highlight that means which you're not used to, you know, females doing this shit and I'm out here now doing it, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're taking it and you're owning it. And that's so dope because I think some people will kind of feel that is a little bit of a cripple, but you're trying to take the, 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 the ownership of the word and saying, hey, yes, I am a woman and I'm doing things in my space, in my, in my alley. And that's, and that's so dope about that. Um, yeah. And one thing I started doing as well is um, I've, I've started calling rap like male rappers like male rap. Oh, you're a male <laughs> rapper, and they just like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're a male That's so DJ. Funny. That's I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> That's hilarious, but I think it's dope. I think yeah, they always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they frown upon it. It's like you feel you're a male rapper, and then we're just like. But you are a male rapper, aren't you? Exactly. And then, yeah, but don't, why you got to say male rapper? Same thing that you guys are doing to us. <laughs> I love that so much. Yo, I'm going to start doing that as well. I'm going to be, oh, no, she's a male DJ. Oh, no, he's just yeah. a male, male actor. Oh, no, he's just, yeah. Please. We're going to give yes, it to please. them the same way they were giving it to us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your Thank answer. you. <laughs> All right. So um, being from Durban and obviously trying to push your music to uh, various parts of the country, like you're mentioning, now we're in 2020, we're in the age of social media, we're in the age of the internet. Um, obviously, it's a little bit easier for you to get your music to different spaces. But do you feel the yeah. necessity for you to uproot yourself from Durban to maybe say a Johannesburg or maybe even a Cape Town um, just to kind of get yourself to the next level of your career? Yeah, honestly. Um, yeah, it's very, it's very important. Like, you know, um, I, I was actually planning on moving this year, but then the COVID happened. So yeah. that's, yeah. But um, I feel like it's very important to just be, be everywhere. Cause even in, in Cape Town as well, um, um, I plan on having like, uh, um, a little movement or whatever happening there. It's just being everywhere. It's very important, but we all know that, you know, the industry is in Joburg, yeah. like, um, yeah, it, it, you can only do so much over the internet, but you actually got to go out there and attend and socialize and actually, you know, um, yeah, and socialize and build relationships like physically, you know what I'm saying? So it's very important. And I'm, I'm not saying that you should move to Joburg as in like forget about Durban and stuff like that. The whole point is that you must move to Joburg, do what you got to do. But then I, I feel like what, what Durban artists don't do is actually they don't come back to Durban and teach what they've learned in Joburg or try and actually build an industry here. Like if you are someone that's as big, for example, as an SDC, I'm sure you can like try and, but that that's another thing. Like I don't want to say it's someone else's responsibility to do that, but it would be dope if we were to have Durban artists that would actually just try and construct a, an industry here. I mean, we have offices, all, all the offices are in Joburg. Who's to say we can't have offices here in Durban and Cape Town as well, you know, just to make it easier for the upcoming artists because not everyone has the budget to just move up to Joburg. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very important. And with us females, it's tricky as well because with guys, guys can just pack up and just leave and go stay with a friend and everything is good. And they make it happen and it, it works. With females in, in this day and age, with a lot of things happening as well, you know, be getting killed left right and center imagine now moving to a whole city that you you don't know anyone there so it's it's a bit of a tricky situation but um no excuses you must make it happen somehow <laughs> yes you definitely yeah. have to push and pull and i think that's the difficulty about the, being a woman I, like you're mentioning this there's, there's various things that we have to be aware of that men aren't have uh, don't have to be aware of there's various things that we have to pay, pay attention to that men don't have to pay attention to just to kind of get ourselves to the next level um some of those things are maybe even just um for instance like you're saying a guy can just pack up his bags go and uh, camp out on, on a friend's couch and live there for a couple of months mm -hmm. while he's trying to push and 
hustle. Whereas for female, we need our personal space yeah. we need to be able to, to feel safe in a, in, in a room where we can sleep without having to feel like we're being threatened. We need to feel safe to yeah. uh, be comfortable to um, present ourselves in certain ways, whether it be our image, whether it be makeup, whether it be clothing. Um, how are you feeling about those, those, those uh, types of themes with regards to females where um, we're always so boxed to look a certain way in order for us to kind of yeah. get ourselves through the door. Because I know with guys, they literally just pick up, they're wearing a, a pair of tracksuit pants and they go and rock. Whereas for us, we have to yeah. do the whole situation, put on the lashes, put on the hair, put on the what. Um, especially for female rappers where there's this perception that you need to be half naked for people to pay attention to you and not necessarily hear your music. How are you feeling about that conversation? Um... I mean, you have to be presentable. That's like standard. I mean, you have to be presentable. Um, but I also, I also struggled with it um, coming up because yo make up your visa. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> yo. So um, I mean, cl everything is expensive. Clothes are expensive. Makeup is expensive. So, but you have nothing. You have to try. You know, you have to try and look presentable. Um, when it comes to like being naked and stuff, that's a whole nother different like um, situation. I mean, I recently got like very comfortable with my body and stuff like that. It's just, I feel like it's, it's you shouldn't force it on, 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 on a female to do that. Like my previous um, re record label that I was working with, they were just like, I wasn't there yet. I mean, as a female, I wasn't there yet. Which I'm comfortable with just showing like, you know, the butt cheeks and everything, but Bona, they were forcing it onto me. And I feel like when, when it happens like that, then you're just not comfortable on stage. You're not comfortable. Like you, you just not yourself. And that shouldn't be forced on to a female. And then another thing, if, if I'm a female that don't want to do it, shouldn't like, they, what's this word? They shouldn't <laughs> the females that are doing it. Yeah. Cause I've, I've, I've been in, 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 the, in conversations where like, the females that are that, that are more covered up mm. are dissing the females that are more relaxed and are more like in tune and more comfortable with showing their body. It's the, it's it's their thing. Yeah. Like yeah. for real. If someone is comfortable doing their thing, let them do it. I, I feel like they, even us as females, Nati, we we tend to do that thing, judging other females because of what they're doing. And honestly, if someone is comfortable doing that and it works for them. G. Yeah. Do your thing. I do your thing. I hundred percent hear you because yeah. there is a lot of pressure for 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 some, for other women to kind of show up or look a certain way for people to feel like they're accepted. You don't have to kind of push everybody into the same box that you're yeah. in. Um, everybody's got a different journey. Everybody's got a way that they want to kind of uh, present themselves as as an artist. And I guess that's the that's the essence of it. And uh, you said something so awesome. You said not everybody is in tune with their with their bodies. And I think when you're in tune with what you want, that's when you can be the better version of yourself and represent yourself a certain way. And I also think that um, it's also just like the pressure that you're mentioning that um, you shouldn't pressure people to look uh, for everybody to look the same we're artists yeah everybody's got a way of expression is expressing themselves and if you express yeah. yourself by like you're wearing a bucket hat and a sweater then that's how you yeah. want to express yourself today maybe tomorrow you want to wear a, a leotard maybe tomorrow you want to wear um, short shorts but that's who you are as an artist and no one should, should have to pressure you into feeling a certain way you know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. And sometimes it's just, it, it, it even changes the way, the music you make, I guess. Like when, when someone is forcing you to, to be like all half naked and stuff. Like, let's say, for example, there's a new track that I have, Icas Italian, clearly, I'm a, I can't, like, I'm a Icas Italian, you already the bucket head, you're thinking, well, a bucket head, like, that's it's the Cassi vibe. So uh, you shouldn't expect me now to be like, you know, in a bikini, that wouldn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? That wouldn't make sense. So it also goes with the music, the type of music that you're making as well. For example, even, even the, the hardcore rappers or, or Indigo, yeah. you know, um, like the bars that she spits, like I wouldn't really imagine her spitting those bars and just like, you know, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it really just goes with what you're saying as well. Yeah. Um, 
on in your music yeah yeah definitely something has to mirror up together something has to that that marriage yeah. is, is definitely um important for people to kind of see where the imaging of the song and the visuals come together um that's that's yeah. very important for that conversation but now um i i do want to find out what else are you are you working on from a music perspective what else can we look forward to in the next coming months as well as the next year because yeah. obviously the plans for 2020 had to kind of be on a hold maybe you had to kind of move a little slower so what can we expect for the next 18 months coming through from you okay so um definitely a project yeah. i'm definitely working on a project yes um and the team we actually like um thanks to, thanks to lockdown we've actually been learning how to shoot our own videos mm -hmm. um i've been learning some graphics as well so I'm even going to go back, like I'm going to be shooting a lot of videos. Yeah. I'm even going to go back because some, some songs like you could, I couldn't shoot a video because budget, you know what I'm saying? But now if we can shoot our own videos, that's definitely like one up. So I'm definitely shooting more videos. Um, I, I was actually talking to Unadia as well. She's, she, she's supposed to record a verse for me this week. Yeah. So we have a collab. So like lots of collaborations. I'm, I'm about that. Like I love collaborating because yeah. I feel like, it just it opens me up as well instead of I'm, I'm always in the studio with the laptop the mic here just alone so when i actually work with other artists it's fun i enjoy it so more collaborations more music more videos j and yeah this week as well um uh Iola Itaita is going to be playing on rhythm city so p go uh, getting that so that's deal. deal you're getting that sync deal money yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of good things are gonna be happening, and yeah, more music, definitely more music, oh. and yeah, hopefully a Miss Cosmo collaboration soon. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, don't worry, man. We're we're in the studio. We're trying to make sure that things are happening. But you know what? I love okay. the fact that you're being so self-sufficient. I love the fact that you you you're not necessarily cowering to how the pressures of 2020 have been, and you're saying, look here's an opportunity for me to learn. Here's a way that I can upskill myself. Here's a way that I can save money. Um, uh, you know, yeah, it's important. Little, things like, little things like that, that I think are really dope about this time, because it's either you're going to look on the positive side and say, I can, I can better myself, or you're going to wallow in it and you're going to be sad the entire six months. So Yo. shout out to you for looking at the brighter side and looking at your glass half full, you know? Shout out, shout out. And it, it's very important. It's very important, especially in this music industry and entertainment in as a whole to keep a positive uh, mindset otherwise in Bella, you will sink in because it gets rough it gets real yeah. and you will sink into the deep you know dark place so it's very and shout out to my 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 people as well my team they always help me like you know keep up because uh, not every day is just like happy bright day oh uh, uh, i'm positive no it's not always like that it's not always like that just shout out to the people you know like around my circle that always nabble when when someone is low there's definitely going to be someone that's going to be just like uplifting everyone so that's dope yeah 100 percent. shout out to you now thank you so much for your time thank you so much for just um expressing yourself so openly and also being able to share a few a few gems uh, here and there and uh we will be following you we'll definitely bring you back onto the she social podcast and we'll be supporting you 100 percent. and i love the music that you're putting out right now yeah. and i'm waiting to see the videos you're going to shoot yourself because I think that is yeah. more celebrated than um, obviously than yeah. playing somebody else. But you know what? Big ups to you for, for, for making sure that you control yourself, you control your brand, and you take yourself to the next level. Where can people follow you on social media? Um, it's Nels underscore essay everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Right. Nails underscore S A N E L Z. A lot of people were saying nails as in like nails. I'm like, how? How can you ah. nails? Nails. <laughs> It's N-E-L-Z underscore S-A for South Africa. So yeah, Instagram, Facebook, everywhere, Spotify. And yeah, I'm going to be putting a lot, uh, out a lot of music as well, just unannounced. Like, you know, um, don't wait for me to be like, hey, this this track, because yo, there's so much music. Sometimes I just coil in there and then just, you know, if you're in tune with my Spotify or my digital music pages, there's going to be a lot of music there. Nah, that's <laughs> New music. Cool yeah all right thank you so much nels for your time really do appreciate thank it thank you thank you oh man such an amazing conversation happening there with nels the queen of the coast herself yes she is a rating from durban and she's making sure that everybody gets to know exactly who she is and hear her music and just to get in tune with her brand as a whole all right so i do have my second guest coming up in a moment i will be chatting to the one and only holly ray 
everyone, so welcome back to the She Social podcast with myself, Ms. Cosmo. I've got my second guest for today. I've got the beautiful songstress, Ms. Holly Ray, with me. Hey, Holly. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, you know, uh, us as artists, just trying to survive, trying to make sure that we're getting through how tough the lockdown was. Um, obviously, uh, this past six months has just been a little bit of a shake up for us because 2020 has just been a crazy time. How's that time been for you um, just this past six months for you as an artist as well as a person? I think for me, it's been like personally, obviously difficult. Like we're so used to being out there as artists. We like to connect with people. Like that's what we're about. Yeah. Um, so it's been difficult now having like your whole life kind of turned around. Mm. But I think in terms of like music and, and kind of like the business side of things, I've really tried to focus my energy on other things. Like obviously I can't perform and I can't do what I usually do. So like what else can I do? Um, mm. And I mean, during the lockdown period started a, baking series with my little sister yeah. um, I shot a travel series for Viva Nation so it's been really interesting just like learning new things about my capabilities and um, pushing myself to do new things um, and then yeah just being able like transitioning as well into like the whole live streaming thing learning a lot about the tech behind the music and that's been great like I've really taken this time to learn more about myself more about my craft and that's been really good for me. That's so dope, man. And I think um, oh, there's always the two edges of the sword and kind of sitting back and saying, okay, are you going to be very negative about certain things or are you going to be positive and look at other ways that you can kind of use this time for? And it's good to hear that you've also kind of used this time to, to get in touch with yourself, get in touch with your family, get in touch with your music, get in touch with um, your other skills and not necessarily only just focus on the music, which is, which is really dope. I do want to kind of backtrack just a little bit with regards to a bit of your career. Um, have you always know that you wanted to sing was that what or something that was inherent in you or was it something that you kind of figured out maybe later on in life I think like, I always loved music I actually asked mm. my grandmother the other day like did you always think I would be a, an artist and she was like I always knew you would do something musical because I was always like making a noise I was always like banging on things I was always like <laughs> trying to make music in some way um, so I think I was always destined or I was always going to do something with music and something creative. Mm. Um, but I think, you know, I started singing really young and I started learning instruments. I always just wanted to learn new instruments. Um, I started with the guitar, went to the drums, started a marimba band. Like I was always hungry for, for information around music. Um, and then started writing music. And when I was 14, um, I got offered a deal with Sony. Oh, okay. um, signed a deal um, and really that was kind of when it was like okay cool this is actually a career like music is a real thing that people actually do yeah. and make money out of it it's a business because up until then it was just such a hobby for me it was how I expressed myself it was yeah the, the thing I turned to all the time was music um so yeah I mean I signed a deal when I was 14 and that's when I was kind of like oh, this is real and this is going to be a job for me. Ah, but that's so dope that you could, you could get in tune with something at such a young age because I don't think a lot of people realize certain things until a little bit later. So you at least were starting to get in your, your hours of understanding the music industry at such a young age for you to kind of get yourself into the position that you're in now. So fast forward to um, you now where you're working with your music and you're working in such a very fast entertainment industry right now. It's also very, um, South Africa being a majority black country, um, for you as, a, as, as, a, um, as an artist yourself, did you find it difficult to kind of get yourself in tune with house music? Because I know as much as it's a very universal type of sound in South Africa it seems as though the, the focus would always be on more of the black type of artists as opposed to yourself how did you find yourself kind of integrating um, and not necessarily finding that there was a racial divide with getting yourself into entertainment I think the thing is like I've, I've always listened to house music like since I was a kid that was like the music I was listening to and when I signed my first deal when I was 14 the label was very much pushing me towards pop music mm. because I had that I was a white girl blonde hair do you know what I mean like that <laughs> But it was expected. Um, so they were very, like, they were pushing me into um, pop music and I was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I found that 
I was not genuinely making music. It wasn't authentic. It wasn't who I was. I hated performing the music. I hated being in the studio making music. It just like wasn't who I was. Um, and when I was about 16, I just turned around and I said, I can't do it anymore. I'm not going to make this music anymore. Like, um, and I just finished a whole pop album and I turned around and said, I'm not releasing it. Like, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Um, and then I started making music. Yeah, I mean, I just, the thing is, like, I'm very much about, like, being genuine and authentic to who you are. Because I think that people also identify with that as well. Um, so, yeah, I just started making house music. And I didn't just, like, go into big studios and find house producers. Like, I actually went to people's bedroom studios in Umlazi or Komashu and Durban, where I'm from. And I really wanted to get into the heart of the music that I loved because I was listening to house music. I was listening to, at that time, so the sort of, like, peak of house music was, like, your heavy K and your professor. And that was when house music was popping. And that's what I loved. Um, and I wanted to kind of go behind that. Like, how does it get to that point? Like, who is making these beats? Where are these sounds coming from? And that's why I kind of dived into that vibe. And that's, I think, where my true love of house music came from, was the sort of underground house scene. Nice, nice. Would you say that the influence also kind of came from the people that you were surrounding yourself with and that you, you couldn't necessarily tap into the, the blonde girl, uh, white girl, you know, um, who was particularly make pop music but you were just like yo I'm out here grooving with my people and this is what they listen to this is what I'm influenced by and this is what I want to make for sure I mean I went to my first she said when I was 14 ah! and you like things you <laughs> <laughs> so I mean that was like what I was doing I mean even like my friends my friends were listening to like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and that was the vibe and I just wasn't interested in that you know I, like I said I was listening to Professor I was listening to Heavy K I was listening to Black Coffee I was listening to the Soul Candy Sessions that was the music that I loved so yeah I think definitely it was the people I was surrounded with it was my friends my family my family also listened to a lot of South African music when I was a kid so I think it was definitely much more authentic for me to make South African dance music Nice, nice, nice. And I guess um, it also kind of influenced you to make the music that you're making now. And um, you won yourself record of the year at the Summers, girl. Bam, 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 bam. Um, how was that feeling, getting on stage and taking that award? Because that's the most coveted award at the Summer Awards. And for you to take that away and say, wow, I finally did it. I basically... Um, did what I wanted to do. I did what felt right to me. And you shut, shut down the naysayers and you made the music and it obviously spoke for itself. How was that feeling knowing that um, it was approved by the rest of South Africa? It was incredible. I think, you know, as an artist, you work so hard and you sometimes just get caught up in your hustle, you know? Um, and then things like that happen and you kind of like, okay, cool, I am doing the right thing. And I think for me, it was a complete shock. Like, I know everyone's like, I didn't expect it. I really did not expect it. Like, <laughs> smallest like most unknown artist in the category everyone knew the music obviously everyone knows deeper mm. um and i think also like i think i wasn't like treated like an a-list at the psalmist i was very much under the impression that i was not gonna be winning anything i wasn't gonna you know i was sitting in like the general area all the nominees were like in the arts vip <laughs> area and even like when i won if you watch the psalmist the camera like couldn't find me because no oh, one even no! Knew <laughs> So I think for me, I was very much like just really excited to be there, excited to be like celebrating music that night. And then when they said my name, my manager who's sitting next to me literally like pulled me up and was like dragging me up to stage because I was in such disbelief. Oh, no. um, but I think, like you said, I think the music speaks for itself. And like, it was such a big song that I think touched so many people. And that was the accomplishment of the song for me. It's like looking at it as people's wedding songs and people's graduation songs and that was what was really beautiful about deeper for me yeah that's beautiful man and of course i guess it also kind of motivated you to keep on going because you know sometimes you always need those milestones to kind of say okay i'm actually in the right seat okay i'm actually doing this thing okay we're pushing forward did that push you also put you in a different mindset to say okay now we're going for bigger things 100 percent. i think also I was the first woman in 20 years to win that award since Brenda Sassi. So I think for me, it was like, 
wow, this is incredible. This is such an amazing achievement, but it's such an indication that a lot more needs to be done in our music industry. Yeah. Um, and for me, it was amazing. It was a bittersweet moment because I felt like, okay, cool. I'm contributing hopefully to breaking those sort of like patriarchal boundaries that surround our music industry. But I also feel like they have so much further to go. Like, it's not like we haven't had an amazing female artist with an amazing song in 20 years. That's not the case. Yeah. It's just, haven't been given the same support structures that the male counterparts have. So I think for me, winning that award and then finding out, it's like, okay, I have so much work to do as a female artist, specifically in the house scene, where we're just seen as vocalists and not artists, mm -hmm. to change that narrative for female artists to come in, in oh. my genre. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was actually going to say that now is that um, you always find that the vocalists are literally just used for just your instrument being your voice and then it's as if you don't even exist and then the DJs are the ones kind of taking the front line which I understand because yes they do produce the song and they do push the music but you also are a very intricate part of the song I mean we're seeing now with Jerusalem and Nomkrebo being the voice of the song but Master KG is getting all of, all of the shine with regards to um, the music so how are you feeling and how do you what do you think needs to change for vocalists who are making the music for the house songs because you're also the one who's writing it so a lot of the creative also comes from you the, the words that people are singing along to comes from you as the writer so what do you think needs to change in the industry for for the recognition for vocalists i think it's it has it comes down to you know djs or producers because sometimes it's not even the dj or the person who is in the line, they didn't even produce the song. Sometimes they did, but often they have a ghost producer or a beat maker or whatever. Um, and I think it's it's about giving, I think we need to start crediting specifically female artists, because I find often when there's a male artist, they are given the credit. Mm. Um, and I think the thing is we just have to start changing that narrative. We need to start having conversations where we recognize people like Nam um, we as a society need to go, oh, wow, she is a contributing factor. And I think it comes down to the public, comes down to the industry, the media, the people within the industry, giving credit where credit is due. Because mm. um, I think, unfortunately, individuals always want to take shine. That's the nature yeah. of the last few things, you know. Um, we always want to step into the limelight, even when it's not our limelight to step into. So I think the responsibility falls on the media, on the public to start recognizing where we need to give people credit. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of what it comes down to. Yeah, definitely. We definitely have to keep on pushing and trying to make sure that obviously that the females get they get they 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 shine for whatever song or contribution that they've made onto certain music. I, I support that a hundred percent, and that's why I've got platforms like this um, to make sure that people actually hear the voices of the females who are on the music because you are what people are singing along to, and that I think is very important for people to recognize as well. Um, talking about your different skills and your achievements, another achievement that you managed to 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 get i mean i saw that on your instagram was that you got your honors degree cum laude and for those who don't understand how important cum laude is is that you've literally like top rank of that <laughs> of the, you literally got all of your a's and you were touring the entire country while that was happening how was that yeah. juggling being able to um be on stage performing but also still be able to go back and do your degree and make sure that you finish but outside of finishing you also then uh, came through top standard of your degree it was really difficult i won't say i'm like oh it was so easy <laughs> you know, i started my honors degree in march and i dropped deeper in april um, and obviously there was like a few months of, yeah, of like, just like deeper building up, but then it just exploded. And I would be in like different, like three different countries in one weekend. It was just like insane. Um, and it was, it was a lot of support from like my team and stuff. I did a lot of my work in airports and in the bus and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but also I was really passionate about what I was studying. I was really passionate. I've always been passionate about education. Um, I come from a family where they sacrificed everything for me to get an education. I didn't come from a wealthy family where like tertiary education was an easy thing. You know, I paid for my own tertiary education. So I think it was, I had a lot of value placed on it. So it was like, I can't take this opportunity and like squander it, you know? Um, so for me, it was, it was just, I was really dedicated to what I was studying. I was interested in what I was studying. So it made it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just motivated to do well because of, I think, the sacrifices that were made for me to be 
there studying to be in the room with incredible academics and because an honors degree isn't easy like it's Mm -hmm. it's people who are working really really hard you know you you finish your degree and now it's the next step Mm -hmm. um so yeah I think I was just yeah really motivated by quite a few things (laughs) what 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 was the, the the degree in I did my degree in it's called a CCMS so it's culture communication and media studies Ah, nice. So obviously you find that you are using your degree in your everyday life because it makes it that much easier for you to, 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 to infiltrate it. Because you know, some people will say, oh, why am I going to go to university if I'm not even going to use what I've learned? Life is a, better, is a better teacher. I'll get my experience that way. How are you feeling with the balance of getting an education and obviously life experience and how has that helped with your career? I think the thing is, is that you don't necessarily have to go to a tertiary institution to have an education. Mm. Um, they, people who are hungry for information can find information. There are libraries, there are books, there's internet, there's so much at your fingertips. Mm. I think it's about being an interested person. Like something my mom always told me is like, interested people are interesting people, mm. you know? And I was always interested. And I think that's important. It's like not all of us will have the opportunity to go to a tertiary institution. Mm. But making the best of your the resources you have at your fingertips is what's important, I think. Um, and I mean, yeah, there are a lot of lessons in life that you do learn that life will teach you, but that's kind of being streetwise. And then I think it, it is important to have a certain amount of like book smart behind you. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it doesn't have to be for university. It just has to be accessing information, taking it in, asking questions, being interested in the world around you. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. So um, within the space of lockdown, you did also mention to yourself, well, mention to us rather, that um, you have been upskilling yourself throughout the lockdown because, I mean, artists couldn't perform. Um, one of those things that you also then did, you said you started a, a cooking series with your little sister. And I think every, the entire country's fallen in love with her as well. <laughs> all your videos whenever you guys are going to the shops just to buy bread or whether you are at home or whether you're you're, you guys have such an amazing relationship can you just give us a little bit of a background as to how she came into your home but also outside of that why you guys are so close i think so when i was 18 i'd like literally just finished school and my mom was like okay cool i'm done (laughs) like i'm finished i'm free of kids um, and then, um, like a few months after I turned 18, my mom decided to adopt my little sister. Um, and I think, I don't think it was something she like had like really thought about. It was just like a circumstantial thing where Mimi had kind of come into our lives and it was like, what do we do? And my mom was like, well, I have to, she has, she's become my child, you know? So Mimi was adopted when I was 18. Um, and we've just been really, really close. I think also because of the age gap, because I was, I was like an adult now and now there was this you know kid and we just really bonded i used to do before i got busy i used to do everything with my little sister oh. we would go everywhere together um so i think that we just we've always had a really really strong bond because of that um and she is such an eccentric person she's very loud very outgoing and i think it's because She's always, there's always like musicians coming through the house. There's always like people with really big personalities. And so I think I love that about her. She's the most confident seven year old you will ever meet. <laughs> um, unapologetically herself. And yeah, I mean, we, we love to cook together. We love to drive around the car and sing together. Um, and yeah, we have a really special bond, I think, because of our age gap as well. I think that's what makes it quite special. And I always a joke and I say I'm like a mommy sister. <laughs> 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 she definitely is explosive and she definitely is um somebody like i said that the entire country is also starting to fall in love with because she's just so confident and she's so pure and um i think a big shout out to you and your mom for for taking her in but also making her feel comfortable enough to feel that confident around you because you know sometimes when it is a, an adoptive case um the kids usually kind of cower back and they and they and they become a little bit more introspective or, or um introverted rather is the word um as opposed to being so open and loud about being uh, in a new family so I think the love that you've shown her has also made it easier for her to be confident in herself and it definitely shows in all the in all the content that you post together um tell us a little bit more about the cooking series so that we can get involved in that as well so the series is called baking with the rays 
Mm. Um, and we started it off as just a sort of like IGTV series because we, we started baking and people were just like asking for more. So we're like, okay, cool. Let's do this properly. Mm. Um, and it's just, it's really growing. We're in like talks with some quite big brands at the moment, which is quite exciting. We want to jump on board, but I think we're probably going to start see, like shooting the second season, yeah. um, in the next couple of weeks, which I'm really excited about because she is on my case. I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> I've been uh, at my place in Joburg, so I'm really excited to go spend some time with her and shoot yeah, the next season. And that'll be up on YouTube. Um, the other se season was up on IGTV, and we will be putting the next one up on YouTube. Awesome, awesome, man. Can we be expecting more music coming through from you? Um, obviously, for the next couple of, of, of months, maybe the next 18 months, things have kind of shaken up, but obviously it's level one now where we might be seeing you on stages performing. Maybe there's a new project coming out. What can we expect from Holly Ray? I have been working on a lot of music, which is really exciting. Um, the same sort of like Holly Ray sound that people love, but I think it's a lot more mature. It's kind of taken a yeah, like a slightly more mature approach to, to the music that I've been making, which is really exciting for me because it's kind of like following that next step of who I am in my life and taking people who follow me with me on that journey. Um, so I will probably be dropping that early next year. Um, for the rest of this year, super just focused on the kind of productions that I've been working on. Um, Oh, yeah, the travel series I've been working on and then Baking with the Rays with Mimi for the next sort of three months of the year. Um, and then, yeah, early next year, probably a lot more music dropping. Nice. Who are some of the, who are some of the biggest, um, well, not necessarily big, but like, who are some of the producers that you want to work with that you think will be on your next project? Oh, that's difficult. I think for me, Dr. Duda is amazing because I think he brings out the best in in the artists that he works with. I've yeah. heard, obviously, from the cusser, but I've heard some stuff that he's produced for other people. Um, and I just think he really brings out the best in vocalists. And that's really what the job of a producer is, I think, often. Um, so I'd love to work with Dr. Duda. Um, I, I've worked with Dr. Maruti, who's also amazing. Yeah. Um, and I think I'd love to work with him some more. So those are my top two. Ah, oh, nice. All right. Um, thank you so much for your time, Holly. Really do appreciate it. We'll definitely be watching. We'll definitely be following a lot more of the content. Baking with the Rays and, of course, your travel series, the music. There's so much more to look forward to. Um, and I guess it is the, 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 the light at the end of the rainbow for us to also just, you know, be able to ex expect so much more coming through from you as well. And we'll tap in with you a little bit later as well. But where can uh, people follow you on social media just to make sure that we're in tune with what you're doing? You can catch me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. It's the same handle. It's at Holly Ray Music on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Yes. Thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it, Holly. Yeah, I appreciate it as well. <laughs> And there you have it. That is Holly Ray telling us just about her life, about her experiences, her music, her, uh, her joy, basically being able to tap into her different types of skills as well. Baking, traveling, um, music production, and of course, winning an amazing award at the Summer Awards. All right. So you can follow both of my, um, my guests for today on social media, as they mentioned, Nels Essay, as well as Holly Ray Music. With that, I do have to love and leave you. This is the end of the first season of the She's social podcast um i am deciding to rather reinvent the podcast just a little bit i'm going to be taking just a short break but with taking the short break i'm going to be coming back with a bigger and better view of it i will no longer be shooting on zoom thank goodness because it does feel a little separated but i am going to come back with uh, something that i think will be much better in the second season so please do stick around and make sure that you tune in when i do come back with the second season of the she social podcast continue to subscribe continue to like continue to comment i will be taking a lot of your comments a lot of your suggestions as to who you think I should be interviewing in the second season of the podcast. And of course, we will be working on the event portion of She Social as well. So that's going to be coming to you. So there's so much more to She Social that will be uh, happening. And I think just taking the short break will help me to kind of make sure that it comes back louder and prouder and representing all females in the entertainment industry. With that, thank you so much for joining me here on YouTube. And of course, um, keep on checking out the social media pages, SheSocial underscore SA on Instagram, as well as on Twitter and on Facebook, SheSocialSA.